Zoe as World Finals here live from DreamX Stockholm. I am Zoe and joining me are my trusted analysts and friends, Jake and Johnny. And we got one more upper bracket match to cover for today. It's gonna be between two giants in their respective regions. Toronto Defined looking absolutely untouched all year long. And Crazy Raccoon only to be touched by the Falcons, of course. They had a rivalry going on in their region all season long as well. And now they're meeting here already in our semis in the upper bracket. It's gonna be a good one. The big question is what takeaways can we really have from their opening matches from yesterday? As they're both very dominant teams, Let's discuss what we've seen and if there is any takeaway uh, to be taken away. What a sentence. Wow. How do I get paid to talk? Well, we haven't I had Fika know. yet. We haven't had Fika. It's true. Fika is missing. That's the, that's the is real missing. issue. We need a stun, that's cinnamon bun or two, <laughs> cup of coffee, get in the mood. But yes, you're right, Zoe. And I think this is going to be an incredibly interesting matchup because when you look at the bracket, obviously Team Falcons, Crazy Raccoon, those are going to be your two favorites. But to many, Toronto Defiant, they are kind of like the third team looming, Jake, and they should yep. be the one that could potentially have a pretty good go against Crazy Raccoon and Team Falcons. Yeah, let's talk about Crazy Raccoon, though. Obviously, an extremely dominant team. Uh, we saw today, pretty much the entire team is role MVP. Sorry, he sang. Sorry. <laughs> but like, other than that, like that's just dominance across the board, Jake. How do you stack up against that? Yeah, we haven't seen so much of Crazy Raccoon so far this tournament. That's because they had one of the fastest matches I've ever seen against <laughs> NRG. It was a complete uh, evisceration on control into Flashpoint. So uh, it feels like we have barely seen them play in this tournament. But this is a team that historically has looked at their best in these incredibly oppressive and aggressive styles. Uh, whether it's the Wrecking Ball, I think actually this meta looks really good for them. Like in these comps where, you know, Brig can get in, get into the action. I think Chorong is the best in the world uh, when it comes to maximizing his value on the hero, pushing it to its absolute limit. And then the team overall, they have so much clear trust in each other when they play, it really shines through. And I think this is a style, a composition that is going to play towards teams that are willing to take risks, that are willing to put their bodies on the line for one another. And I think that has really been what has defined Crazy Raccoon to me. They play things that no one else is willing to play because they believe in each other. They have that faith in their individual skill. And I mean, I guess they have good reason to with, with so many role stars on the team. I mean, if he sings like, if he, all right, this is not true, but if he <laughs> He's saying we're the worst player on your team. You're in a pretty good team. <laughs> You're in a pretty solid roster. You really are. You really are. You're bringing up a good point, though. That trust in each other, that synergy this team had. Quite frankly, I mean, Toronto Defy, they're the only team in this tournament who's not changed a single player all season long. They came into this OWCS journey as this team you're seeing on your screens right now. Yesterday in their match against Enz, yes, they won it. Technically convincingly, but Enz got opportunities to come back into it, Johnny. Yeah, I mean, that was Enz you beat. Now you're going to have to play against Crazy Raccoon, which is one of the best two teams in the world, of course. And so it'll be a really interesting matchup to see how Toronto Defiant actually fares. Now, worth mentioning as well that Toronto Defiant, they are the one Western team who is willing to take on the Korean teams on maps like Ilios, for example. How are they going to fare in the dive matchup, for example? That is going to be one of the kind of things I think this team wants to figure out in this match specifically. Because when it comes to Toronto Defiant, you kind of have two win conditions. You have two kind of paths you can go down. Do we want to hedge more towards the dive composition and the Winston? Or do we want to try and force these Malga duels? And which one of those two compositions is going to give Toronto Defiant the best chance at winning? It probably is going to be the Malga because it is kind of like a neutralizing meta. But when it comes to Toronto Defiant, there's an upper bracket and a lower bracket. You have two chances to kind of like figure stuff out. What path do you want to go down? So I think this is going to be a very informal, informal, informational matchup uh, <laughs> against the Crazy Raccoon to kind of figure out where do we rack up against the Korean teams and what is our best chance at winning this entire tournament? Because ultimately, that is Toronto Defiance's goal. They want to win and lift the trophy on Sunday. That is why this team was put together going into the year, and that is their goal with two days remaining left in the circuit. Absolutely. And I mean, they are confident, rightfully so, given the dominance they had in their region. And Necker and I actually had an opportunity before all the shenanigans here on stage started to sit down with a few of the Toronto Defiant players. Let's see what they had to say. Good everyone, Zoe here, joined by Necra and no other than Toronto Defines' very own Merit, Sugar Free and RuPaul to answer some questions about the OWCS. There is a twist because we are in Sweden, which is of course the land of putting together an undisclosed brand of furniture. So, 
Gentlemen, this is your task while we're doing the interview is we're going to have you attempt to put this together. Yeah, so we'll be test sitting chair. on this, so you better not mess this up. Yeah, that's going to break. Yeah, that's <laughs> guys, please uh, have at it. <laughs> They're going for the instructions. You're already making No instructions? No, no, go for it. Go yes. for it. No, this is good. This is good. We're this giving you <laughs> We're giving you props for going for the instructions first. Not, actually, we don't need instructions. Whoa, 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 no, 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 we, no, we actually don't. All right, we don't? All right, we don't. So what were, what were the vibes like heading to Stockholm? I think going into Stockholm, we're, we're having a lot of fun. I feel like as a team, we've come a very long way. It's been a long season. Uh, I've played a lot of matches, obviously like four stages. Uh, but we've improved a lot, um, not just teamwork-wise, but also in just the way we think about the game. You haven't changed any of your coaches, any of your players, you guys have stuck to the same roster and it's made you win. I think like if you take the whole season, we just build and build and build on top of what is it? our like already known knowledge of the game of different metas. But like other teams, they have to like restart, restart from scratch and they like add players in and out. But for us, it's like a more linear progression, I'd say. Wait. Right, then guys, spill the team. Was there ever a moment where you even looked at options to add someone or drop someone? I don't oh, know. No. Nah, not once. At the nice. end of uh, the last Why stage, not? I feel like the competition got a lot steeper in the NA region. Uh, were there any teams from, from NA or even EU that you felt like were good sprint partners? Oh, have you done anything special to prepare for this type of meta right now? Or can you spill anything about what your rituals are for practice? <laughs> I eat donuts. You eat donuts? I eat a donut every time before scrims and matches. That sounds awful. You're going to crash from a sugar good. high. That Dude, sounds I'm so, so tired bad. Of this. No, I'm telling you, it's, it makes me play better. <laughs> That's a horrible advice. <laughs> it doesn't matter. It could be a glaze, chocolate, strawberry, Any sprinkles. kind of donut. <laughs> you guys are making progress. As I don't want to sit on this. <laughs> <laughs> Mayor didn't lit turn uh, upside down. We were actually you, you gotta sit on there. Yeah. We, oh. <laughs> you, can, you can easily sit on this. Are we in sure? All right. Am I just okay? So yeah, I think you gotta go for it. Go for it. Okay. I keep my weight on my heels, so I'm not gonna. It's a good seat. It's good. Yeah, I feel really safe. Yay! Yay! Yeah. You kind of did it. Oh my god, guys! You like. <laughs> This huh? is supposed to like make it not wobble. The entire piece oh. that is still. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> like, this is the safety one. This is like the most important one. <laughs> Great job accomplishing the furniture task. Yeah, may your performance this event far succeed what we've seen in the chair building competition. But guys, thank you so much for joining us and best of luck in the tournament. Thank you. They, they straight up cut out the part where Merritt turned the whole thing upside down and everything fell apart. <laughs> <laughs> he completely threw for the team. But yeah, we got some great insights uh, in that interview. They also shared with us that they mainly scrimmed against Falcons. They came uh, to Europe, like I think two weeks prior to this tournament to get acclimated and be able to actually scrim on low ping against those strong teams. Yeah, you know, and Toronto have looked good on this meta. I think they, they did beat Ents, but honestly, I'm a little worried for them. I think going up against Crazy Raccoon right now, Crazy Raccoon look in peak form. For them, frankly, second place is a failure. I mean, that's a really rough spot to be. For Toronto, I think if they got, let's say, like a top two placement, if we're honest, I think that would actually be pretty good for Toronto. If they could beat either one of these Korean super teams, that would be a solid placement. If they win here, I think they're going to be super stoked on that, beating Crazy Raccoon for the first time for this team. But I, Crazy Raccoon looked to have peaked. They just swept NRG aside in their opening match. And honestly, Ants was reasonably competitive with Toronto. And, you know, based on how the, the, the transitive property of the tournament is not <laughs> looking good for them. You don't want to do too much math if you're Toronto Defiant. You got to just come in confident and, and, and play aggressive, uh, uh, not give anything up. But yeah, Crazy Raccoon, that's a tough test. Maybe there'll be a donut diff. I don't know. <laughs> Sugar Free was talking about donuts. I'm like, I can't recommend no. <laughs> that. But if it works for you, Sugar Free, then like, okay, fair enough. You had such a good one liner. You want to. Should we... Yeah, yeah, it's not very sugar-free of him. You know? oh. Oh, yeah. I personally, big fan. I thought that was really funny. <laughs> I was I was convinced that when I was competing in Korea in 2016, they fed us pizza before the games. And I'm kind of like, 
It's a psyop. I, I think, yeah, I think it was psyop. Like the Korean, <laughs> the Korean tournament organizers, they're like, did they throw us under the bus by giving us pizza before the game? So we, we go on stage and we're like, oh. Heavy carb and sugar crashes oh. right before it's the game. You don't the want way. that. You don't want I don't know. That. Eat a Caesar salad, some chicken or something. Like, you know. Caesar salad, you literally named the one unhealthy salad option. Guys, no food, just pre workout. You know, you heard it here first. <laughs> <laughs> That's not good either. This is not That's, a PSA. No, this this is not a, these are the PSA. dark secrets of esports, guys. No, this is what no, they don't want no, you to no, know. No. <laughs> Probably <laughs> like head and everything. No, no, eat a tomato or cucumber or something. Like something, you know? <laughs> spinach? I don't know. We're here, we're here clearly not for good health advice, but I do advise you to check out our Neon Streets bundle. Wow, what a transition. There wow. you go. <laughs> no, but honestly, this comes with plenty of cool skins, name cards, charms. You got it all in the Neon Streets style. And this mega bundle will actually uh, contribute to our overall prize pool. So you're essentially dropping some cash on our players. 25%? 25% of the revenue right. goes towards the prize pool. And yes, you're supporting the players, so. Show some love to the players, to the scene, get some dope skins. Yeah. Everyone's the, winning. That's what I'm The Barbie Junkrat. The Barbie Junkrat. It the, is very Barbie. It'll uh, go very good with the my- The May skin is kind of growing. I mean, May's hair looks is good it? in that skin. It actually kind of does, it does. I mean, any pink skin just goes hard. That's true. I say that as Time someone who skin. used to be a pink hater, but like, Spark convinced me otherwise. Do you, Bubblegum do, Reinhardt. Do you roll with the Reinhardt, the pink Reinhardt Always, skin? always. I will never unequip that skin in my life. The Spark Rhine is pretty elite. You got to admit it. It is one of the, the one of the best so skins. It's, 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 it's I like the, I like the Hangzhou Spark Winston. Channel the Gushui, you know, the Primal Blade. Okay. That's what it's all about. Okay. Yeah. Fair enough. But now you can rock the Neon Bundle. That's right. Set. So. I'd rather the Neon Tracer than than the, the Hangzhou Spark Tracer. I think the, the blue with the pink makes it makes it pop. Right. Personal fashion preference. Yeah, okay, so we give health advice, fashion advice, but that's not what we're here for. We're here for all we we'll watch, and we're ready for the second upper bracket match. It's going to be Crazy Raccoon going up against Toronto Define. Let's bring our teams onto the stage. Golden Boy, over to you. Thank you so much for that, Zoe, and good thing, because I know nothing about fashion, clearly, so I, you know, that worked out really well. But let's go ahead and bring out our first team, because this matchup is going to be awesome. We got two heavy hitters, and honestly, some... Heavy crowd favorites. So let's bring out the first squad. It's Crazy Raccoon! Your reigning OWCS champions here to take it all, to finish the year in stride. Every opponent that has tested them has fallen. Toronto faced Goliath. And their opponents make some noise for the Toronto Defiant! Toronto Defiant, our North American super team featuring some of last year's Overwatch League champions. Now looking to run it back in Stockholm in our OWCS World Final. Who will turn up with them here in the global competition? All right, coaches, go ahead and fist bump players. Take to your positions and one more time, make some noise for your casters. It's Necra and Jaws. Thank you very much, Golden Boy. Yes, two heavy titters indeed. Crazy Raccoon versus Toronto Define. I think the crowd in favor of Toronto Define didn't do so hot in the Dallas Major, but they are here to play, making it all the way through. And you know, it's a pretty tough and pretty scary composition uh, comp uh, to play against this Junbin ball, which we've seen time and time again. Can they, uh, can they finally kill Junbin? Can please someone kill Junbin? That's going to be a very difficult task. I think something that Toronto Defiant can certainly stand up to, but Crazy Raccoon, they are the team to beat. That is the team that everybody is looking at on their radar saying, you got to get through them if you want to actually win the world final. So big test of strength here for Toronto Defiant to actually see if they can actually put one up to Crazy Raccoon. Winner here does go on to face Team Falcons. Is it going to be another upper bracket final rematch of Falcons versus Raccoon or can Toronto Defiant slip in a little upset and knock Crazy Raccoon down to the lower bracket? Only time will tell, of course. And uh, is it Crazy Raccoon picking the map first, Rose? Can you guess where they're going? Hmm. I think Ilios. Probably a ball Something map. Something tells me Ilios. Probably a ball map. Yeah. Let's be real with ourselves. <laughs> Your producer's like, yes, it, it is Ilios, yes. Don't worry, we're seeing Junbin Ball. It was quite funny, actually, when I talk, uh, talked to Space Station the other day. Um, I was like, you know, like, how's everything been going? Like, how crazy are How are they looking? It's like, bro, every time uh, we see or like play with 
uh, Crazy Raccoon, like Jimbin, he doesn't go below 400 HP. <laughs> like, uh, his Wrecking Ball is something to behold. We haven't yet seen the Roadhog, but there is still time. Come on, still give us hey. the Roadhog. We We're all waiting Hog. for it. It can happen. But Ilios is our first map. How do you think Toronto defined here? What do you rate their chances versus Crazy Raccoon on a map like this? Mm, not great. Okay. Well, that's. I think I think I would say that about any team, though. You I mean you take a look at Jinbin's Wrecking Ball? There's just so few ways to actually be able to take that down unless you're going to have strong focus fire. This is one of Jinbin's absolute best heroes. And I don't know. I, I think Ilios, you might just want to go ahead and chalk it up to a loss and move on to the next one. Make sure you're focused. It allows their comp to play some of the best heroes, right? Shoes, Ana, that is one perfect point, right? You want to be able to play your best heroes, and Jumbin just plays the ball. Shu can play the Ana, they can play a nice defense backline, and then Shu can just shoot people. And doesn't need to do healing, because jumbin has got that covered by himself. Of course, on your screen there, Kasaurus warming the team up, making sure they're all ready to get into the game. And someone too, I mean, what a superstar last year on the Florida Mayhem. A champion, can they make it happen again? Here's some uh, map comparisons for you as well. Toronto Defiant, like 83% win rate on Clash, Slash, Flashpoint. But I mean, across the board, Crazy Raccoon, 80%, 81%, 80%, 87%, 70 We'll call it 80 basically across the board there, apart from that uh, one game type or two game type, sorry. I mean, they've been a dominant force all year and I expect nothing less from here now. Well, let's go ahead and get into our match. Crazy Raccoon versus Toronto Defiant. Only one can walk away the victor. Upper bracket, semi-final number two, Toronto Defiant versus Crazy Raccoon. Crazy Raccoon picking Ilios, and we know what we're going to see here. Probably a little bit, or a lot of it, a Jumbin Wrecking Ball. Looks like Ruit to start us off. Two Titans in their own region, finally getting a chance to go ahead and clash again on this global stage. Last time they faced each other, Crazy Raccoon did beat Toronto Defiant 3-0. So can Toronto Defiant deliver a blow that nobody else can outside of Team Falcon and actually take a map off of them. Right now, we take a look at our spawns. It's gonna be jumping on that Wrecking Ball, probably. And let's see if Toronto Fight can rock this Malga. All right, Ruins, long-range hit scans. The order of the day here as well for Lip. No Widowmaker, it's gonna be the Ash. And then Hisang on the Farah. Jumping Ball already on your side of the map. Merit being a little bit defensive here too. Go in the Cassidy instead of an Ash or instead of a Widowmaker to try and help shut down the ball. Yeah, you got the hinder group with that mag grenade. That is something that you can go for, but uh, does it matter if you're just gonna have your backline already eviscerated? Yeah, uh, I, RuPaul probably took a headshot and a body shot there. The Lip and Hisang working in tandem with each other. It's gonna be the first cap. Now this is the scary point here. Moving as a unit for Toronto to find, Anybody gets left behind, especially a support, they're going to be feasted upon. Especially because you have so many ways to actually weave that damage back there. Dynamite's over the top, the big splash damage coming through from those fair rockets. Shipper Free already getting sniped out before Toronto Defiant can make another move. And you can see how much work Shu is going to be able to put into that backline as well. Those anti-nades so powerful, make sure that the damage is thick and fast. There's the hinder nade, but oh, it's okay, Jim is out of there already. Actually approaching this point has been so hard. Toronto to find have been on about one third of the map currently. Eventually making it to the center point. I did see Jimbin going under 400 HP, so that's a good start, but he sang again. There's been three kills, all crazy Raccoon. Looks like Toronto to find though, they're barreling forward. The backline falls. And so would the point eventually you'd imagine. There we go, someone taking down Jimbin. Okay, now. The ball is in Toronto Defiance Court. Quite literally and figuratively in that sense, but Toronto Defiant finally getting some percentage on the board, taking a look at their ultimates. They're going to be able to have this Cassidy High Noon. You have this Pulse Bomb as well. Big targets on the back, looking at Toron and Shu on the receiving end. <gasps> what a wombo combo from Heastang there. And Shu, nade on the Malga, instant barrage. Heastang just clears two of them off of the point. High noon, speed ring. Oh, Lip didn't see that one. 
There you go. Okay, Merrick. Settling the score. Can they actually get this point, though? Jumbin, he's going to be everywhere all at once. He's got the mine. They've got Nano. Here comes the orbital raid from RuPaul, but can they actually stay alive? Nano Booster onto the Pharah. Rally's deploy. Did get anti briefly, but a quick hold of the shield there from Vega keeps himself alive. Bob ends up getting deployed by Lip as well, and Vega succumbs to the mines, as well as a few Cheerios from Chorong. 90% from Crazy Raccoon now. Very scrappy fight. Sugar Free invested that pulse bomb. Actually did get a big pick, but Nagger oh. taking a look at Vega, switching over to the Lucio, helping this team be able to get back to the point. Standby available from Chorong as well. Here's the point pressure and the cap. Tron did a fight. Managed to get there, but look at that. Sound barrier comes in, saves Jumbin life, but how long can he survive? Looks like the shoe's healing him up nicely. Vega's getting chased. Chorong, Jumbin. Little tag team effort there, taking down Vega. Tron did a fight, now need to touch the point. Here's OT. They've got a chance. But are they actually going to capture it? They are able to actually get back to the point, though, and trigger that overtime, hoping to be able to recapture it away from Crazy Raccoon. But Crazy Raccoon, they're biding their time. Take a look at the fight happening behind that point. Merrick been hoping to again. It up. Cage ends up coming down on the point, and there's the cap. Jimmin just rolls out of it. It doesn't matter. I mean, Toronto's still in control. Can they actually hold the fort down? Because right now, everybody is flying over someone's head. He cannot be a factor in this fight. Chorong and Jumbin yet again just filling the kill feed full of blue. There's the barrage. Solo used once more onto someone. Only one way to take down an MVP like that. Crazy Raccoon control the point, and here comes RuPaul. 10% away from the Juno Wall, but he's all on his lonesome. And Jumbin, I mean, Merit knows it's over. Nothing shutting down the wrecking ball there. This Crazy Raccoon handily take that first round. So powerful. This wrecking ball comp has been so difficult for teams to face. Very difficult to get practice against some of the best as well. This, just outside of going in with a scrim versus Crazy Raccoon. But how many times have you actually been afforded the opportunity to actually scrim against them, get practice against this wrecking ball? Because Crazy Raccoon don't play this all the time. They are also able to pull out the Malga, pull out all of these other tricks off their sleeve. And so. Yeah, I mean, you get a chance to run the Wrecking Ball here again. Trying to find cracking the code for just a couple of times, but you have and need more than that to be able to get over that line. Bit of a shorter range map now, so you can see Lip obviously jumping over to the Tracer. Merrick continuing on the Cassidy. Bit of an interesting switch up here for Toronto, though. They're actually going to have RuPaul on the Baptiste instead of that Juno, relying on Vega to be able to give that speed over to the rest of the team. And so with something like the Immortality Field, maybe that gives Toronto to find a little bit more staying power in that back line to deal with Lip and Hisang. Nice roll there from Merritt, dodging out of the nade. Toronto going low. Okay. Sugar free. Lenny. Okay. Back line dead. Lip still in the action. Luckily though, Sugar Free's got the recall. They're chasing him down though, yeah, Lip dead. Okay, Toronto to fight, here to stay on the point. They're gonna cap first this time. Now that they get a chance to have control of this point as well, they can set off. They have Mare on this high ground with better vantage points for this He saying Farah. You have the opportunity to look at where Jumpin's going and make these rollouts with the Wrecking Ball as well. And peel for your back line. Land there onto RuPaul. RuPaul's going to be quite safe against this Wrecking Ball. Sugar Freeze 1 HP though, spotted out by Junbin. He's going to be able to barrel through, knocking people out of the lamp is so important for the Wrecking Ball. And there comes the tag team yet again. Shu Nade from downtown finishes off Merit. Window on the point though, RuPaul's got a dirty angle on the front line. But now needs to pay attention to He Sang who's gone for the small flank. He's still looking for him as Junbin trying to take down RuPaul but it's been hard. There's the direct, a slam into a rocket. Finally kills RuPaul, and there's the cap for Crazy Raccoon. You can see why RuPaul wanted to go for the Baptiste, though. You got the off angle with that amplification matrix. You had that damage onto Chorong, which allowed to burst him down. But Are you serious? You also have the opportunity to just, like, serious? track them. No yeah, way Jumbo gets away with this. Okay. Oof. I think we've all fallen prey to that at some point. All right, RuPaul makes it out alive, bros. We're all good. We're chilling. But the mines are coming in in just a moment. Vega narrowly slips out of there. RuPaul had to throw in the lamp to save himself, but now he's in trouble. It's Merritt, and well, how would you get the angle there? If you're RuPaul, you just can't. Merritt on his lonesome. 
trapped off by the mines. Yeah, you just don't have that healing or that vantage point for RuPaul to be able to deliver that over. Vega can't get access to that room either unless he's going to walk into a Wrecking Ball mine. And so Crazy Raccoon, they keep getting a chance to stall this point, work up more percentage, and they still have ults to work with. This fight, you could expect it to be scrappy. Lipto finding Sugar Free already needs a Toronto fight and have to invest other things to be able to come back into this fight. Look at the assists though, there were four in that feed. I knew. Oh, get the tag on Lip, but that's about it. Wow. Oh! Nice direct as well onto Vega. Okay. Toronto now in this game. This map is slowly slipping away from them. Crazy Raccoon have a lot of tools to finish out this map. Would it make it from Sugar Free? Try and find a pick, but Lip's not going to test him. No, it's just to get out of spawn. Toronto Finder able to at least push Crazy Raccoon back, but that's five ultimates they're walking into. Jumpman has the opportunity to set up here, but you're looking at Shu, but this Nano is a big engagement tool for Crazy Raccoon. Oh, Ruble's in the back right now. Last one out of the spawn. Here comes the Diva Matrix. Okay, Sound Barrier also deployed. Backline's going to be safe. Same with Jumbin though. Match Sound Barrier there from Shorong as the Nano gets deployed onto Keystang. Straight with a barrage. A lot of it getting Eda, but still getting damage in. Oh, he directs Ruble, the fadeaway shot onto the map. Almost hits the direct onto Sugar Free, but he slips out of there. But unfortunately for Toronto Defiant, this map is slipping away from them completely. Mines deployed on the point, and Crazy Raccoon. They're going to take their first map in the series, a map pick. You know exactly what they're going to play. There's no surprises here when it comes to compositions. Toronto Defiant knew what they were going to mess with, and unfortunately, they messed with the best. No one able to take down that Wrecking Ball comp from Crazy Raccoon just yet. But now Toronto get their pick. After losing this map, they now get a chance to actually think strategically about how they want to approach the rest of the series. No Wrecking Ball. That's what they have to avoid taking a look at these next couple of maps. Okay, Toronto's map choice. Obviously, they're not going to run the dive here oh, on this next map. I mean, this first one was just pick after pick after pick. I mean, these long range rockets are absurd. He's saying so good. With so Kara. precise. Lip got a little bit too aggro here, but the speed ring as well. And it was quite a while ago, but with Cassidy speeding up when they popped the high noon. Still getting used to it, man. You get the little hyper strafe from the Cassidy. It's so ridiculous. Actually, You're at map high. one, like hyperspeed <laughs> in Millennium Falcon, going max is ridiculous. Good play from Jumpin so far. Right, where would you go if you're Toronto? In your mind, you wanted to play somewhere that's, you know, I can't imagine we're going to see Jumpin continually playing the Wrecking Ball. They've obviously gone to the Malgocon, which is something they're very, very good at regardless. But if you're Toronto, where do you feel most confident? I think you want to try to go to a map that you can play the Mauga. I think that's what going to be a big key to success here. Someone is one of the most aggressive tank players that we have, and he's one of the best in the world for that reason. So I feel like play to that strength. Know that you also have a ton of team synergy cohesion as a squad that you've been able to stick together the entire season. No changes apart from just having to learn new metas, and they're all very good friends. Got to play to that strength. Yeah, at the end of the day, like if your team is just winning as consistently as you are in NA, why would you make any changes? It's gotten a lot closer in North America, it has to be said. Of course, Nightmare really gave Toronto to find a run for their money at the end of stage four. Like we, go, we were going to maps that we didn't think were possible against Toronto to find, but the gap is definitely closing. But now North America has to close that gap against the Korean teams and Crazy Raccoon. They are one to mess with, but at the end of the day, like you mentioned, you just got to rely on that cohesive strength of the team. They've been working together so long at this point, no chops and changes. They've been confident in their own game. And Sugar Free, I met him earlier backstage, and he was like, look, we are confident going yeah. into this. We All know smiles. Crazy Raccoon is super strong, but we're not scared of them. We want to go in, we want to feel ourselves, we know we can be the very best. We've got champions on our roster. We can do this against Crazy Raccoon. We can be one of the teams that knocks them down. Yeah, exactly. I mean, they have the experience that it takes to know how to win. RuPaul's <laughs> death rays. Not sure if that's a positive or a negative for RuPaul there. I, think I, I, would, I read it as a positive. Absolutely. I would too.
Looks like we're going to a clash. Ooh. By Toro picked by Toronto to find. If you remember back to the stats, right, that was what Toronto find a lot of success on the clash slash flashpoint maps. Hannah Oka has been chosen, so a real curveball here. Not a lot of teams, even when Clash was introduced, were picking it up in stage four. So we see if Crazy Raccoon, what they actually want to play on this. Hanawoka and a lot of the Clash maps, they do scream like Rush. You are fighting around small and close points a lot of the time, so it's probably going to be something like the Malga. Um, but are Crazy Raccoon even expecting this? How many times have you scrimmed these uh, Clash maps? I do not think that it's very often. As you said, there haven't really been too many of these Clash maps picked in the regular season of OWCS. And so uh, it's sort of a map type that these teams have wanted to avoid. But knowing how high the win rate Toronto Defiant have had, especially as this being one of their best map types, let's see if they can throw a wrench into these crazy raccoon plans. Clash, little bit less of an opportunity to set up that wrecking ball. All right, Toronto, what do you got for us? What's up? What can you bring to the audience? A lot of shares for Toronto to find. A lot of Toronto to find fans here in Stockholm. Crazy Raccoon as well. A lot of fans traveling from all parts of the globe. Seen a lot of Korean fans here too, uh, cheering on for Crazy Raccoon and Team Falcons. Looks like it's going to be the mirror. Hanawoka points T unlocking in about 20 seconds as they hit the rollouts. These rotations are going to be so important. A lot of times we do see these teams try to fight for this high ground presence, but you have the opportunity to actually drop down, flip out of the gates though, with a huge pick onto Merit. Someone is so low. What? Oh, they're getting so much damage in. How does Lip like instantly delete somebody there? All right, that's first point. Probably like overrun, you got the sticky bombs landing onto him as well, and just so much follow up there from Crazy Raccoon. That is a first cap for Crazy Raccoon as we now have to move forward to that next platform. I mean, no if you're quick yet. enough, you can finish these games in under three minutes, but Aww. it does take an awful lot of pressure and an awful lot of damage, but <laughs> damage they got in spades. Sugar Free looking a little bit bewildered there, how he ends up going down to Hisan. All right, someone also has to back off. Overrun out and Vega in trouble. There he goes, shield bash, shield destroyed. And Crazy Raccoon. They're going to take the second point as well. So Ronson to fight now fighting on their last, of course. It's worth keeping in mind, last point does take a long time to cap. And there's three checkpoints too. So there's a chance to finish, but it, I can't imagine we're going to see that. Not against uh, a caliber of a team as uh, Toronto Define. There's also the respawn advantage, which is why right. it makes it so difficult for these teams to go 5-0 in Clash. But Crazy Raccoon have ults. They can open this up with the Orbital Ray. They have these things from the kit. Orbital Ray doesn't end up coming in perfectly cool there. Look at the positioning of someone right now. He's just shooting people in the back, but Lip. Oh my word, the damage is just insane. Someone just managed to get an overrun kill, and here comes the duplication from Sugar Free to keep himself in the fight and contesting the point. And eventually ends up running out, takes to the skies, and here comes the respawn advantage like you were saying, Rose. They are able to come back in, but not before we see this duplicate invested by Hisang. Ash Stun comes in from Vega, there's the spin, there's the win. A lot of damage coming down onto someone there, and Hisang Another small spin, I mean, this is just an absurd speed run from Crazy Raccoon. They're surely gonna get at least one tick. Wave respawn coming in for Toronto to fight, but they're on their last limbs already. Merit does have the Death Blossom, looking for a teleport into the back to be able to get this. He has to hit it now, he's already used that fade. At least the Cardiac Overdrive's gonna see him through. A lot of that damage coming in, but Lips already claimed one life, maybe a second. Jimin takes care of Sugar Free. And the numbers are dwindling. Now for Toronto to find. Oh my god, he's saying. Hey, it's just a menace on the Echo. Second checkpoint. Maybe even more. He's saying on a godlike spree. 15 players. Surely Toronto to find are going to be able to clutch this fight out. Eventually they get it. But Crazy Raccoon have four points already. 
They just need one more. They're already setting up for the end game. He thinks he's gonna have another duplicate, another Death Blossom for Lip. Two more support ultimates in the back, and Crazy Raccoon, they've got the ultimate advantage. They also have the advantage when it comes down to their just positioning. Go in with the Orbital Ray. They're waiting for Toronto to come to them. They know that Toronto has to touch this point in order to actually contest it. Point unlocked. There's the dupe. Rally deployed. A small stun onto Sugar Free, but he hits the Wraith Walk. Here comes the Orbital Ray. Sugar Free looking for Lip, but Lip's already found one. He stand makes it another. I think this is just about it. A speed run of Hannah Oka. Toronto Defiance map pick and Crazy Raccoon are gonna 5-1 Toronto. Vega's got a bash, but that's it. My word. It was over before it even begun. That is how dominant of a team Crazy Raccoon is. It was almost a 5-0. Feels like there is absolutely nothing stopping this squad at this point from potentially reclaiming that title as the OWCS champion, finishing out the season. Toronto Defiant have to think of something else though. That is now a map down. What else can they actually throw at Crazy Raccoon to try to trip them up? Because Hanaoka wasn't it. Crazy Raccoon were ready and they had their number. Sometimes when you mess with the best, you really do just die like the rest. Toronto to find now another map pick. Kasaurus probably scrambling in his book. Like, okay, it ended that quick. But this is the caliber of team that Crazy Raccoon have brought. Let's jump to some highlights. There won't be too many of them. I mean, look, he sang. Everybody was kind of looking at Lip. Lip's getting a lot of these final blows, these first picks. He's, but he sang so slippery on the echo. He hit a godlike spree as well near the very end. I mean, look at that. Like you said, Rose, as well. That sticky damage, just everything thrown at Merrick so quickly. So little chance to actually react. So accurate with that sticky damage. You can already see how much he's saying tried to utilize that in order to also make sure that this focus team was going to be as powerful as possible. So much investment going into making sure you can focus fire down the Mauga on Toronto. Someone just not able to actually survive to keep that front line alive. And the rest of the team having great focus to be able to follow up on those picks. Masterclass, honestly, from Crazy Raccoon at this point. If you're just looking at Heesang just in this last fight, yeah, they're a very chaotic Mauga meta, of course, but Heesang's just off to the side, not taking any damage. Just sitting there free firing, throwing try shots in. Throwing sticky bombs in, as soon as the tank goes low, focusing beam, good luck healing it. I mean, five deaths on the side of Crazy Raccoon. Very quick map, and a very quick chance as well for Toronto to find to reset their headspace. It was fast, sure, but a mental reset, get back in the game, it's still winnable. See if Kasaurus uh, has cooked up anything special for this next map choice. It's also still in the upper bracket. The losing team is still going to have an opportunity to actually come in, play through that lower bracket. There are a couple of scary teams down there already as we take a look at some of the other North American teams that are waiting for them. But no, this is a tough match. Toronto need to cook up something really special to get through this crazy raccoon squad. Come really play the dive against them. I mean, ideally you continue to kind of play the Mauga. Like you said, an upper bracket game. Winner will go on to face crazy, uh, Team Falcon, sorry. Don't want to call Crazy Raccoon too soon. But the way it's looking like now, maybe they do end up once again facing Team Falcons in an upper bracket finals, which will be played tomorrow, of course. Toronto to fire potentially falling down to the lowest. They can still make a, a heck of a run down there, of course, but it's still a scary point to be in. You know, day one, get the nerves flushed out. A lot of these players, or most of them at this point, you know, they've played on stage multiple times before. Not too worried at the face of things, but when you're down in this situation, especially after a map like Hanawoka, which was so quick, maybe you are a bit shaken. Toronto, picking King's Row though. Try to run back that Mauga. What else can you expect at this point, being able to see that King's Row pick? My only worry for Toronto is the fact that Crazy Raccoon can just put Hisang on something like the Fara. But we are going to see a sub, Junbin coming out, Max 
coming into the roster for Crazy Raccoon. Okay. Yeah, Jumbin always starting, of course, playing the ball. Then straight into the Mauga. So Max coming in. Probably a little bit more Mauga, honestly. We'll see if uh, Crazy Raccoon have any kind of off-meta style that they want to play with Max. Of course, we've seen a, a few teams do that. Cool Twisted Minds comp a little bit off-meta with the Ash and the Farah. Um, perma being run, not just for like a specific game type. Of course, NRG Shock as well, riding a more off-meta style with the Sombra and the Queen. Let's see if a Crazy Raccoon have got any more tools in the shed. Max versus someone. And this is kind a of a clash of titans. It really is. And Max and Jimbin were like the next upcoming stars uh, last year. They were like, okay, these two, they're going to be some of the very best tanks to play Overwatch. And someone, of course, winning the Overwatch League last year on Florida Mayhem. So it's only an inspired dance mode in the game, of course, with the Neon Bundle. Worth picking up now if you haven't done already. On Contributes to the prize pool, of course. So it's really like, although someone hasn't been around for, you know, since the dawn of time, like Apex, but, or at least at the high level, it's still like, I would put it as a, a veteran in someone versus more of a, I wouldn't say rookie, but close to being a rookie in Max. As close as you can get at this point, I'd say. Max definitely doesn't have as much experience on that professional level as someone, but you still have to take a look at Max being able to beat on this crazy raccoon roster. A lot of power just from the star power alone on crazy raccoon. And they put enough emphasis on making sure that Max fit into the roster that they are trusting him with this next map. I almost want to say like, okay, we put Max in. We haven't just played the Malga again. Like we're just chilling. We give Jumbin a little bit of a rest here and see what uh, Max can kind of bring to the table. Because we are that confident in our own game and just kind of beating Toronto Defiant. Um, we're, we're focused on just being Toronto Defiant 3 0. Just getting the rest of the players into the lobby now. Of course, Max is joining. He just has to boot up and get his settings correct and uh, join lobby. And then we'll press play and then we're ready to go. Just curious what's going on in the mines right now for Toronto Defiant. Of course, Kasaurus there. Parting some words of wisdom, I'm sure. But very focused and determined. I mean, Toronto to find have been all year. And you can't rest on your laurels either, especially at the start when Toronto were just winning everything. They were just, okay, go into a match. Okay, what's it going to be? Okay, 3-0. Like, yeah, go next, go next, go next. It didn't feel like there was any challenge. But like I mentioned before, at the top of this series, they have been challenged now by teams like Nightmare. And it's been, quite, I would say, quite scary for Toronto. We don't want to lose our crown in North America. They almost did. That map seven versus Nightmare in stage four was just in an insane series. And you can see how everybody in NA has leveled up to ma match them. I mean, not just a map seven in that finals, but as well as a map five in the upper bracket semis. Like Toronto Defying has definitely had their work cut out for them in North America as every team has gotten better and better. But when you actually take a look at this bracket, there there's still a good reason why they found themselves here. 2-0 versus Ents, still a very competitive series at that, with Ents being able to go pretty toe-to-toe -to -toe with this Malga. But now Toronto, one final chance to see if they can bring themselves back in this upper bracket series. Kings Row, our map number three in the upper bracket semis. Toronto Defiant looking for all the energy they possibly can now. Their opponents potentially twisted minds in the lower bracket. If Crazy Raccoon can finish out this series here and now on King's Row. All right. Max on the defense. Yeah. Or Max on the offense, sorry. We'll get those uh, flipped around. Toronto on the defense first. Yeah, no yeah, so surprises for Toronto. Stock standard here, exactly. Exactly, yeah. It's just completely stock standard, right out of the meta page book. Going to have Toronto setting up on this high ground with this Malga, of course. But how did Crazy Raccoon uh, actually... Do, we're, we're getting the graphics sorted, don't worry. But yeah, how do Crazy, Crazy Raccoon actually want to approach this with Max and roster? Do they actually go for something like this Mauga? They're hovering over the double sniper. Something that Lip and He's saying could absolutely stay on. 
All right, there's the switch. Yep. I'm not too shocked again. Like I said, maybe just putting Max in, getting some game time on the stage. Very important in these land environments. Just shake off those nerves early on. So mirror comps from Crazy Raccoon and Toronto Defiance. Very early aggressive push though. Vega taking a lot of damage, ducking into cover. Those sticky bombs exploding on his shield. So a little, little bit more defenseless. Jeez, this off angle from he's saying is just something dirty. I mean, if you're Toronto in this situation, you have to kind of come and match them, but we expect nothing less but pure all-out aggression. This Toronto Defiant get quickly team wiped. Someone got burst with the, the Pulsar Torpedoes, the Sticky Bombs, the Focus Beam, a Shield Bash. That yeah. is just how coordinated Crazy Raccoon have been with all of these different picks. Knowing that the assignment is get this Mauga out. If you can get some type of pick onto the back line, that's another way that you can approach these fights. Crazy Raccoon having his duplicate up for Hisang very shortly. You're almost waiting for that Cardiac Overdrive as well, right? You're saving a lot of your burst. As soon as that Cardiac Overdrive goes down, that's when you go in. That's when you launch everything you possibly have at the Mauga. All right, RuPaul. He's got his ult, at least. Orbital rate available. Same with Crazy Raccoon, though. Another team kill, back to back. Toronto Defiant. Rumbling slightly in the neutral. Yeah, Crazy Raccoon being able to win that without using any of those ultimates means that they've got five for the rest of the streets phase. And if they keep getting these first picks like they have been, then they might not need to use anything at all in order to get this payload to that second checkpoint. Sugar Free, though, working up to the duplicate as well. That's certainly something to throw oh. in, and he's saying gets spotted. That's a confidence build-up. Nice little burst damage there onto He's Thang. Didn't see it coming. Trying also Litter Blaze. Five volts, cage deployed. Sugar Free's got a good angle here. Both orbital rays have been a pop. A nice little bashed on onto Sugar Free, but he does end up leaping into the front line. And a free cage for Sugar Free. Four and a bit minutes to go as Max tries to get any exit kills, but he's gonna just get bursted down by he sangs Back in the action with a duplicated Malga. There you go, all right, someone's standing tall. Big expensive fight for both teams though, as Crazy Raccoon are still They're getting still away fighting. with kills. They're still tussling. Willing to get down and dirty with it. As long as Lips alive, anything is possible for Crazy Raccoon. They're going to push this on. I mean, look, is who's it to touch? Absolutely no one. Merit's too far away. Whew. Yeah, he doesn't even get there in time. Wanted to go for the teleport onto the payload, but Crazy Raccoon had already gotten it over the line. Almost five minutes in the bank for Crazy Raccoon on this third point. Still no ultimates yet, but uh, that's so much time to work with that you look at that and think, it's inevitable that Crazy Raccoon are going to be able to finish off the map. There's the charge. PT from Liv onto the back line. Cage deployed by someone. A slight little rumble here, but no one's paying attention to Liv right now. But you might not even need to because Sugar Free and Merit, they're putting up numbers now. Big, big fight win here for Toronto as they try to dig their heels into the sand, working up to even more of their own ultimates to throw at this next fight. The rally can be really useful if Crazy Raccoon want to take this front to back. But you also have that duplicate to throw in, and Sugar Free is going for it. Yeah, even hits that dupe as well. You saw the focus by going on to Lip, trying to force that raid form, and he does expertly. Oh, what a bash. No kill, though. Oh, he stand gets him on the exit. That bash was almost perfect. He stand connecting the sticky bombs as the Echo just basically sat there, waiting for that stun to wear off. And there's another team kill and Rose, a dupe, a blossom, and an orbital ray for this next fight. There is one for RuPaul to be able to respond in kind. Merit also still has this death boss and to be able to launch onto this point. But three and a half minutes still. Oh, death boss is straight on top. Merit's going to try and match him, but the damage is already done, I'm afraid. What a respect on the name. I mean, look, Merrick tried to jump in there, but the orbital rays just crossed. And honestly, sometimes it's a little bit difficult, right? If you're in Merrick's situation there, you want to get in the fight, but because you ended up using your Death Blossom a little bit later, you can't get too close to Lip because 
that orbital ray, the orbital blossom is just gonna blow you up instantly. You just don't Three get enough lifesteal from being able to throw the death blossom in. You're already taking so much damage. The orbital ray on top is certainly that final piece. You can hear the crowd giving their strength over to these teams, though, as we are going to swap sides. Crazy Raccoon, 3 minutes and 23 seconds in the time bank after finishing out their round. So, Toronto need to finish out this map to have hope of being able to get back in the series. Okay, let's see what Crazy Raccoon brings to the table on their defense. See where they choose to hold. Crazy Raccoon are very good at these aggressive holds. You can already see Max considering the option of just playing around this Mandata statue. Kind of hit them before Toronto to find and even know that they are going to be right there around that corner. I mean, look at the times they're just playing up to the spawn, like really pushing the limits. Saw Team Falcons do that earlier as well. Super aggressive with the mouth cross. Sugar Freeze jumping over to Genji. Okay, so no Echo. Saw Proper do this earlier. And a lot of teams swapping between Echo and uh, the Genji. Spots he sang, but he sang already up to 40% ult charge on the Echo. I mean, that is an absurd amount of damage already done. There's no way that Toronto has been able to get past these gates just yet. Already back to spawn, considering Max their next dying, move. though. So, you're thinking now, you can't really hold too far up. You, know, you can already see them backing up, though. By the hotel, waiting for Max to be able to come back. Still playing this low ground, though, not looking for that high ground defense. And Max should be able to come back. You've got the overrun, you're going to get through the team. There's the charge in, duplication available from Heesang, looking for the Reaper. Finds the mark, but Tron's already down. A Death Blossom for He Sang. Here's the Wraith Wall looking directly at someone. TPing towards him as well. He wants this tank dead. Someone eventually ends up going down. A lot of that damage deflected right back at him. Stops that uh, duplication from running a muck, but uh, he's still got a lot of firepower in his kit. Sugar Free dead, and Crazy Raccoon getting a team kill. As front of the fight, reset to spawn. Double support ultimate available for both sides. Orbital rays can get matched. You've got the rallies, but these DPS ults are going to be the big difference maker. Sugar Free with this blade, hopefully going to cut through this frontline defense. Yeah, orbital rays and this blade from Sugar Free up in three percent. Orbital ray on the statue, pretty far forward, but Toronto Fine going to make good use of it. Rallies from both sides as well, but Vegas already dead. No chance here for Sugar Free or Merrick to use any ultimate, and it'll be a full gambit if they decide to do it. Two minutes to go. Better to hold on to their alts and see if they can just find the advantage when you've already gotten the double support alts out of Crazy Raccoon. But Cage and double DPS for both of them. This is about to be a very difficult Venn diagram to get through. You don't want to be stuck in the middle. Cage, a TP from Lib, straight on top of the high ground. Oh, RuPaul didn't see that one coming at all. He just flew straight into Lip. Cage comes in from someone as well as Max. And now Crazy Raccoon, they've still got the duplicate to finish this map. There is very little space you can play if you're Lip there. But Toronto weren't able to react quick enough. And even he's saying no going for a cheeky play. Yeah, there's just no, there's been no they don't spot it. place for Toronto to get in. Vega almost gets one shot, has to bash forward into enemy territory. And now someone under a lot of heavy fire. He's saying eventually taken out though. Merrick spin to win. No dupe available for Crazy Raccoon, but they still need to finish this fight. A quick swap around here. Different side to the map as Merrick fights in this hotel. Hits the Wraith Walk pretty early and there's Chorong's death. Eventually taken down. Shoe a little bit more vulnerable. Toronto to fight now on the board. They've got these double support ultimates too, just in case Crazy Raccoon try to get another contest in. And you can see Merrick just pushing forward to get this Reaper to tilt them at these gates. Okay. Okay, Sugar Freak. Here you go, coming alive. What a better time to do it as well. It's gonna be an OT push, I would imagine this next point, but there is the cap. That's all that counts. Still some time to work with. 
two and a half minutes. Toronto with a lot of ultimates to throw at this fight. Well, I mean, Another layered orbital ray, though, for both teams, and Crazy exactly. Raccoon with his dupe has just gone crazy. Can Sugar Freeze play be what they need? Oh, my. well, see you later, Rupal. No chance to react for the Juno. No ability at all to escape from that fire as well. All right, rally exchange there. Rally for the ray. But Crazy Raccoon are getting the better of this trade, pushing up to the spawn doors of Toronto. And just again, stuffing them. They are not giving them breathing room. They don't have time to set up. Toronto have not been able to actually play proactively with any of these ults when, you know, Crazy Raccoon is waiting for you at the top of these stairs. Cage rally for Chorong, but the fight is already over. Sugar Free and Vega dead, and look at this stairs control. One minute and 30 seconds to go. Payload can't move too much further back, but still. They burn a lot of ults and they don't even manage to get out of spawn. Well, they get a chance to now because Crazy Raccoon know they cannot overextend when the time being is as small as it is now. One mistake here will allow Toronto to actually capture the second objective. I mean, the macro game here is just sublime from Crazy Raccoon just wrapping around, but Toronto does end up succumbing to someone. Okay, that's what they needed. A minute to go to stay in this series. Charles going to switch over to the Lucio. I wonder yeah. if just to speed out he's spawn. actually going to stick no. on it. No, just making sure that everybody is going out of the gates at the same time and come back in for a potential final fight. Crazy Raccoon winning here. They win this series and send Toronto down to the lower bracket. Have this duplicate to play around, shoes Orbital Ray as well. But Toronto, they have to throw everything at this next fight. They can't get picked Got off. One save through Paul. Doesn't go over 50% HP, so a uh, focusing being not as deadly. Orbital Ray used, and they're gonna try and press the issue now, but Shu springboards back into it with a, one of his own. Sugar free on a decent angle. Use that deflect to get some space between him and the rest of the team, but that's a, a lot of damage on Vegas Shield. A crazy return gonna go in. What a bash! He's hang takes to the skies though and duplicates the Reaper. The blade is gonna get pulled out from Sugar Free. Oh, Shu, nowhere to run, nowhere to hide now. Good stuff. Lenny coming up big. And that is the cleanup. Only had one fight, realistically, in that street space there, and they're still holding on. A minute and 30 in the time bank. Probably not enough time for Toronto to finish this map with time left to trigger an extra round for themselves. But let's hope someone with this cage, married with the Death Blossom, two very powerful ultimates to layer on top of each other while you wait for Crazy Raccoon to come back out of these spawns. Well, there's the cage. Looked like Joey tried to force that one. Death Blossom's in it as well. There's no chance to Charon to save himself or his team with that shield. But they burn ults. They burn the cage. They burn the Death Blossom. And now Crazy Raccoon, look at what they've got for this next one. It's going to be a hard for us. We're asking for a miracle play here. But if Toronto can get another quick team fight like that, maybe they can actually finish with time left in the bank. Orbital Ray for RuPaul can continue There it is. Off. That's what they need. But Sugar Free going down. It's not a good start for Toronto to find. Max dead, however. But he sang double sticky bomb kill. And Lip helping he sang, just chunking everybody down with the Death Blossom. 20 seconds and a team kill. Crazy Raccoon. They got two. Rally. They got the Juno Orbital Ray, Rose. Toronto Defiant, they've got one ult in the bank. It's gonna have to be the biggest rally of their life, but they're also gonna have to actually touch this payload. And Crazy Raccoon don't wanna let them do that as the time starts to tick down. Well, they're gonna be able to touch at the very least. He sank, duplicates the Reaper, heads straight towards someone's position. And they are just locked on on this tank, trying to force those CDs. It's gonna get a free Death Blossom too. Another big isolation till RuPaul's in trouble. RuPaul needs serious help. The front line, he's going to use that shift to get away as RuPaul survives, but not for too much longer. Someone just bursted down. And that is where Toronto are going to make their final stand. Lenny's played not enough to stand up to Lib. And a 3-0 for Crazy Raccoon. As they knock Toronto down to the lower bracket. Crazy Raccoon with a clean 3-0 victory.
It is going to be a lot for any team to be able to take them down. It did not look very close as Crazy Raccoon are able to win this. Move on to that winner's finals where they get a chance to face off against Team Falcons again. This has been a long-standing grudge between these two teams. It's been going back and forth all year. Of course, Team Falcons coming in as number one seed. Now face Crazy Raccoon, like you said. In like Toronto, a hard-fought effort. But I think Crazy Raccoon right now just on another level. Can Toronto make their way through that lower bracket though? Twisted Minds is their competition down there. They still need to, again, make it all the way. It's been a bit of an interesting journey for Twisted Minds, using their own kind of special spice for it. They've got the Ash, they've got the Farah, something they're very, very content with using and found a little bit of success against even Team Falcons. So we'll see if Toronto Defiant can take them down or will Twisted Minds end up moving on. Of course, that will be their last chance. That lower bracket is a deadly place to be in. But both for Team Falcons and Crazy Raccoon, they're sitting pretty up in that upper finals. We're going to jump over to Danny, though. He's got a small interview before we wrap out this match. Jack and Rose, thank you very much. What is up, everybody? I'm here joined by Chorong from Crazy Raccoons. Everybody, give it up for Chorong one more time. Fantastic stuff. I mean, I'm going to be honest, Chorong. I thought uh, your match against Toronto Defiance was going to be a lot closer, but it, that was not the case. Were you also surprised by the results, or did you sort of expect that it was going to be an easy win for Crazy Raccoon? 자 오늘 승리 축하드리면서 솔직히 말씀드려서 저는 이번 경기가 굉장히 좀 접전이 되지 않을까라고 예상했는데 전혀 그렇지 않았고요. 그래서 초롱 선수한테 여쭤보고 싶은 게 이번 경기를 이제 하면서 아좀 원래 이렇게 좀 쉬운 경기가 될 거라고 좀 예상을 하셨나요? 솔직히 저는 토론토 말고는 솔직히 이제 팔콘만 팔콘 말고 나머지는 별거 없다. 네 그렇게 생각합니다. Honestly, uh, other than Team Falcons, there's not a lot of teams that I was looking forward to going up against. So, yeah, I mean, it, it really proved that was the case because you guys definitely blew them out of the park. Talking about uh, Team Falcons, that is going to be your next match, Upper Bracket Finals. You guys did lose to Falcons uh, in the Asia main stage. How confident are you going up against Falcons uh, for your match tomorrow? So, I just talked about Falcon team, but the next match is going to be the next match of Falcon and Asia main stage. It's the next match of Asia main stage. How do you feel about it? How do you feel about it? Chorong? This is the World Finals. Team Falcons, get ready for us. I am loving these answers. One final question, Choro. Uh, you are our main support role MVP. Do you have anything you want to say to your fans? 자, 마지막으로, role MVP가 이제 선정이 되시면서 이제 마지막으로 팬분들의 어, 짧게 한 말씀 부탁드리겠습니다. 솔직히 이렇게 성적 잘낼수 있는 것도 팬분들의 응원 덕분에 role MVP도 받게 된것 같아요. 정말 감사합니다. Thank you, thank you to all the fans. I think uh, not only the not only getting the role MVP, I think we're uh, able to come up with these results because of all your support. Thank you very much. Everybody, give it up for Toron one more time. That is it for the interview. Dusk, take it away. Thank you so much, Danny. Congratulations to Crazy Raccoon. Zoe here, joined by Jake and Johnny. And uh, yeah, let's, let's be real. There may have been a little bit of cope involved with our hyping up of Toronto Defined. We're just Jake, doing our job. You're so smug. I hate it. You're so smug. I can't with you. But you were right. You know, yeah, we're doing our job. Obviously, Toronto Defined, they have been a phenomenal team. They're phenomenal players. But this does not seem like their meta, Jake. No, I think, you know, for them, in their, their, their best moments have been with Merritt on the core hit scan. Like, that's been his bread and butter. That's when he's able to just focus on his game. The team's able to build around him. That's where they've looked their strongest, I think, in this, like, really heavy team fighting meta. Uh, this isn't really their best look. They make it work. They look good. But, I mean, even against Ents, it was pretty competitive. And I was wondering after that match, like, you know, is, is Ents actually, like, pretty competitive? Are they good at this meta? Uh, Do they, they push Toronto uh, pretty far? Is that is that good enough? But then when Ents kind of fell flat in their lower bracket match, I started to get worried for this match. You know, I felt Crazy Raccoon are just an unstoppable force. And, and this is a meta where they absolutely pile on the pressure. I mean, they, like, I like what Chorong said, get ready for us. I, I think Crazy Raccoon could stomp the entire tournament. And I mean, we love a good success story like that too. End the season without absolute 
dominance. We've seen those players do that before. So uh, let's talk about our MVP for this match. It's he sang. He does get an MVP award today <laughs> got... as well. I had to. I had to say it, John. The match MVP is not as delicious as the role MVP. Sh sh that sh all sh sh don't take gone. anything away from his but performance. How dare you? Yeah, I mean, no ability goes to waste <laughs> when it comes to the crazy raccoon. And I mean, he was clinical on the Echo. Flanking, getting his sticky bombs on the Echo, and then following up with the Focusing Beam. Able to find so many picks early in these fights. I think we saw, especially on Clash, for example, the first fight on Clash, Merrick gets picked. Like, you know, 100 to 0, like, immediately. Second fight on Clash, sticky bombs onto Sugar Free, and then follow up with the Focusing Beam. You're up 5 versus 4. He Sang just gives you an unbelievable advantage in these Echo duos, and especially the way he's able to engage with these sticky bombs and then follow up and secure the kill. I mean, you're essentially playing 5 versus 4 in like so many of these fights, right? It's so impressive. He's one of the best Echoes we have in the entire game. And he's going to be one of those players you have to look for when it comes going up against Falcons. Can he be a true impact player? Of course, if we're looking at the match we saw, once more, Crazy Raccoon, they don't need to show their cards. They're not showing their hand. They're, they're giving us very little to work with where you can say like, maybe this can be abused in some way, shape or form. It's like, no, they're just solid. They're just clean. It's, it's from strength to strength for Crazy Raccoon. I mean, they play this ball strat that, like, no one else in the entire world would even attempt, and they look unbeatable on it. I mean, they make this look like the meta. I assure you, it is not. This is only good if you have five of the very best players in the world. It's a comp with almost no defense in the entire strat, but, you know, you don't need much defense when you're just permanently killing the enemy, permanently keeping them in the respawn. Uh, and that's honestly, especially in this, this Malga style, I think this is another strat that Crazy Raccoon are going to be really good at. They love these comps where everyone can get aggressive. You know, one player opens up the fight and then the pressure just comes on thick and fast. Another player always following up with that aggression. And I mean, with that level of trust and, and confidence in the team fights, they look really good. Normally, this is a support meta that I would say favors Falcons, but I really like the way Crazy Raccoon approaches this. I honestly couldn't predict the next matchup we have between Falcons and Crazy Raccoon in the upper bracket. It's going to be a clash of the two juggernauts going into this tournament. So. I'm looking forward to see how they fare against each other. Yeah, we'll have to wait to watch that one until tomorrow, giving teams a little bit of rest as we are uh, getting our hands We've got to see the Western teams as well in the lower we bracket. We do, so. we do. We see a lot in the lower bracket. I think it's really funny to see the the evolution this year uh, in the Dallas Major, of course. We did have EMEA really, really coming out on top of it. This time it's all NA, it seems. Of course, Twisted Minds still in the running for it. If we're looking at the bracket here, Twisted Minds do have to go up against Toronto Defiant. How do you see them stacking up against one another? Uh, you know, honestly, I think Toronto are probably pretty happy to pull this match in the lower bracket because I think Twisted Minds are relatively exploitable, right? Like, they play a certain strategy based on their hero preference, but I think Toronto, of all the teams in the tournament, is incredibly happy to just get into a counterpicking war. You know, you're going to allow probably a lot more space for Merritt to play a core hit scan where he's going to be incredibly good. I mean, as strong as Quartz has been, I think Merritt is going to be a tough test for them. And I think overall, as a team, they absolutely thrive when they can punish their opponents on the strategic level and counterpick them. And so, to be honest, I think Toronto should be sitting pretty in this, but Twisted Minds, I mean, they've popped off in matches, right? Like, regardless of the strategy you bring against them, you might have been well prepared, but in the end, you've got to get by these big land performances that Quartz and Labda have been delivering. And so, you know, you can have all the great strats in the world, but you've got to deliver on match day. And for Toronto, there has been some shakiness. Yeah, and we will be seeing those two teams clash a little later today. First, we're heading into a quick break now, and when we're coming back, it's going to be all in a energy shock. We'll be taking on Nightmare. You want to stick around for this. we we'll see you after a quick break.